Hi, I'm Carl Herzog, public historian for the USS Constitution Museum. You know, before I joined the museum, I spent many years working as a deck officer and instructor on a variety of tall ships sailing the oceans, including this one behind me, the Corps with Kramer, operated by the Sea Education Association in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. These ships specialize in teaching uh, seamanship, navigation, and leadership, as well as oceanography, marine biology, and maritime history to students from all over. As sailors on board, we don't have to worry quite as much as the crew of Constitution did about going into battle, but we do still have a lot of the same tasks in terms of standing watch on deck and working the rigging and being prepared for the same kinds of circumstances that Constitution crew did, including weather like this. So today we're going to talk a little bit about preparedness at sea and what it takes to be ready to be out on a sailing ship whether it's standing out on the open deck of a vessel like this, which they don't have climate-controlled bridges for you to shelter on while you're on watch, or being back on the deck of USS Constitution 200 years ago. We've got a lot more technology, despite the traditional rigging uh, that Constitution sailors did, but a lot of the tasks are the same and a lot of the goals are the same. Stay warm, stay dry, stay on board, and stay safe. Uh, that's better. Warm and dry. Part of packing for sea and being prepared for sea was knowing exactly what to take with you, but also how to pack it. There's not a whole lot of room on board ships then or now, and traditional luggage like we think of today, uh, your fixed uh, sort of suitcases and roll-ons like, don't really have a whole lot of room to be stored away in while you're on board at sea. Sailors, uh, as a consequence, would either pack in small wooden chests or later on in the traditional sea bag, a deep vertical hole of a duffel bag that uh, made a lot more sense in terms of packing. This is a typical example of a sea chest. The chests were obviously a lot easier to pack, uh, as we'll explain in a second. This is actually in the USS Constitution Museum's uh, collection. It originally belonged to Gunner John Lord on USS Constitution, although the plaque on the outside indicates another sailor, Ward. We think that uh, Lord's uh, chest may have been passed on to Ward at a later time. We know it's Lord's, though, because his name is on the inside of the chest. Gunner John Lord actually uh, was one of those figures who we have managed to learn a lot about because over the decades, the museum has been able to collect a number of items that belong to him that normally we wouldn't even know were, you know, whose they were. Uh, but Lord had a habit of writing his name on everything, which has turned out to be really great for us at the museum. At any rate, a chest like this uh, obviously has its advantages, but the disadvantage, uh, as I indicated, is a lack of space. Uh, sailors on even Navy ships today generally only have um, a small drawer underneath their bunk or maybe a skinny vertical locker to, to keep stuff in. Petty officers, officers, midshipmen tended to get a little bit more space on board, and so they could continue to carry chests like this, but at some point the Navy decided that enlisted sailors were better off just carrying a sea bag. And this is John Lord's uh, sea bag. Uh, this is the traditional vertical opening uh, sea bag, but it's a personal bag that belonged to Lord. When you came on board USS Constitution or other Navy ships at the time, you would have a personal owned bag like this that you packed to bring your stuff to and from the ship or from shore. But once on board, uh, sailors on Constitution would transfer uh, their stuff to a series of identical black bags that were then lined up along the outboard edge of the berth deck. Now, this arrangement certainly saves space, but you can imagine the chaos if every sailor was trying to get into their own bag in this, in this arrangement on deck. As a result, there was only one or two times during the day that a sailor could actually get into a sea bag to get the things that he wanted or needed. This meant you not only had to plan how you packed your bag, but really plan ahead in terms of thinking about what out of the bag you were going to need over the course of any given day. This is also true for actually packing the bag that you're traveling in. 
Even today, there's sort of an art to packing a sea bag to carry with you because of the nature of it and the way you sling it over your back. You can go on YouTube and you will still find tons of videos and advice from uh, current Navy sailors and merchant mariners describing their most effective ideas for how to pack a sea bag. So obviously the order that you pack it in depends on what exactly it is you're carrying and what you think you're going to need and when you think you're going to need it. In the beginning of the 1800s, the U.S. Navy did not have the requisite uniforms that it did today, which makes packing for today's Navy sailors, military sailors at least, a little bit easier than it was for Constitution sailors. There was guidance and recommendations on what should be brought, and due to records that the pursers kept on terms of the things that they bought to sell to sailors, we have a pretty good idea of the kinds of things that sailors were bringing with them. But there was no definite set regulated uniform in the U.S. Navy until the 1840s. So what would you bring? What you'd bring sort of depends, and this is still true today, on where the vessel was going. Unfortunately, however, the nature of oceanic transit tends to mean that there's long north and south distances and you can be in a wide variety of climates over the course of a single voyage. In the very last day of December of 1813, Charles Stewart left Boston on USS Constitution in the middle of a New England winter, but a month later, uh, he was literally on the equator. So sailors had to be prepared for all of that change in weather. This sketch of sailors on deck uh, in miserable weather was drawn by a sailor in the British Royal Navy, uh, and the sketch itself is part of the collection of the National Maritime Museum in Britain. But it gives us a sense of the kind of clothing and preparation that uh, a watch on deck in cold, miserable, rainy weather might have. We can see the watch officer with the speaking trumpet under his arm bundled up along with a couple of the other sailors in a longer, thicker coat. In the foreground, a less prepared midshipman is shrugging his shoulders and struggling to hold off the cold as he paces the deck. Also up to the uh, right of the photo is a servant who is clearly less dressed for the weather and probably only coming up on deck uh, to deliver some sort of refreshments to the watch. So in the days before uh, polyester fleece and synthetics, uh, wool obviously was one of the uh, great warming and uh, wicking kind of fabrics that could help keep you warm and dry. So a woolen pea coat was uh, a normal sort of standard um, uh, attire and would be accompanied by a longer jacket or coat like you see here. Often these were duck canvas and could uh, be coated in uh, tar to give it a, um, a sort of effect of modern foul weather gear and a kind of precursor to the more modern oil skins or today's foul weather gear, which is made from either uh, PVC coated fabric or nylon or even newer Gore-Tex materials. Yarn stockings kept your feet relatively warm underneath your shoes, but those obviously have been replaced too by either woolen or smart wool socks underneath a uh, composite work boot. The other thing sailors are carrying with them is sleeping gear. Hammocks were owned by the Navy and assigned by the ship, but you weren't sleeping in a hammock by itself. Every sailor would carry their own mattress and blanket. Now, when we say mattress, we're not talking about the kind that you would have on a modern bed, but more like a camp mattress or a, a sort of quilted, thicker kind of mattress pad. This rolled up and stuffed into uh, the hammock, which provided not only additional level of comfort, but could also provide an additional level of warmth as well. That plus the blanket that you brought on your own. Now, the mattress and the blanket would tend to get wrapped up and stuffed in a bag as well, too. Hammocks got tied up and stowed up in the hammock netting on deck, where it could provide an additional buffer against enemy fire, particularly marine sharpshooters from uh, up in the rigging on another enemy ship. In addition to clothing, a sailor would carry a couple additional tools and personal possessions as well, chief among those being this, the sailor's knife. This is a knife from the USS Constitution Museum's collection. It's a typical folding sailor's uh, rigging knife. You can tell by the sort of blunt edge. This wasn't uh, designed to be used to stab anything, but rather simply to cut line. 
Uh, the folding pocket uh, sort of style knife could be carried on a lanyard around the neck or from the side. Uh, and this one is probably from the early 1800s, though we can't confirm that it was actually uh, used by sailor on USS Constitution. This is not unlike the knives that are still carried by sailors both in the military and a merchant marine and tall ships today. It's pretty much the essential tool for life on board in terms of being able to cut through anything that you might need on a ship that where everything is, uh, is line and rope and sailcloth. Other personal possessions a sailor might carry with them could include stationery for writing letters home if they were literate, uh, possibly a you know personal book or uh, or other mementos and keepsakes of uh, of family and friends at home. A lot of the things on that packing list are no different today for either Navy sailors or merchant marine or tall ship sailors heading out to sea for extended periods of time. What would you take with you if you're heading out to sea? If you're a Navy veteran or active duty Navy, or if you've spent time on sailing ships or other merchant marine ships, what's in your sea bag? Let us know by posting to our social media this week with the hashtag pack your sea bag. We'll be collecting and looking at the things that people would want to take with them if they're stuck on board a ship for an extended period of time offshore. If you have questions or comments about any of this, don't hesitate to post to the social media or if you have suggestions and things you'd like to see future videos about, let us know about that too. Stay warm, stay dry, stay comfortable. Talk to you later.